What's going on guys? So we're going to find out how long it takes the Vancouver Canucks to win a Stanley Cup in NHL 23. If you guys have maybe been living under a rock, you might not know. The Canucks have kind of been in turmoil this season. Uh, nothing really going right for them between injuries, player performance, things like that. Obviously, they just fired Bruce Boudreau, who's like a fan favorite coach. I think the players loved him as well. On top of that, they just traded with their captain, Bo Horvat. Some people would say the return for him wasn't the greatest, should have gotten more. So at this point, you know, really curious to see what the Canucks future holds. And in game, I'm curious to see how long it's going to take for them to kind of rebuild this team into a Stanley Cup champion. Obviously, in real life, they said they're not going to do a rebuild. They just want to retool, try and compete, but, you know, very, very soon. We'll see whether or not the computer GM takes the same approach or if they go for a full rebuild or maybe just try and compete with the team they have. I'm very curious to see, you know, what that AIGM comes up with. Now, as you guys can see here, looking at the team, we've got Kuzmenko on the first line with Petey and Besser, Garland, Miller, and Bolvier on the second line. Bolvier, of course, coming over for Horvat, Mikhaev, Lazar, put Colson, Olgunders, Danika, and Pearson on the fourth line. And Ratu also came back in the Horvat trade. will be an AHL. On top of that, though, they don't get the first round pick because unfortunately I can't move picks. So they kind of actually get screwed on the Horvat trade in game. Now, defensively here, led by Quinn Hughes, the number one. They haven't played with Bear on the top D pair. You then have Luke Shine, all and Larson on the second D pair with Dermot Myers on the bottom. Goaltending wise, you got Spencer Martin there and Thatcher Demko. So, like, overall, this team shouldn't be a basement dweller if they're healthy. Probably not a Stanley Cup contender either. So, uh, like I was saying, we're just going to start simming here, see how long it takes them to win a cup, see what moves the AIGM makes. Also, to you guys, I should mention, I'm the Tampa Bay Lightning in this video, so not going to be touching the Vancouver Canucks at all. Also, too, even for the Lightning, I have everything just set to auto. As I'm not trying to influence simulation whatsoever, and obviously, too, it'll be cool to see, like, years down the road, what was the better approach, whatever the AIGM comes up with, or the real-life retool that the Canucks are planning on. And now, I'll simming through the first year, guys, a blockbuster trade just went down. Minnesota gets Tarasenko and Brandon Saad. St. Louis there gets a second-round pick, Carson Lambos, Liam Ogren, and Ryan O'Rourke. So a pretty big haul there. Obviously, uh, Tyre Seiko is one guy that's actually in the trade deadline rumors right now. So it'd be pretty cool to see him actually get traded in Minnesota in real life. And I just finished him through the first season, guys. I would say the top four teams in the lottery, quite realistic. You got Columbus there, jumped from two to one to get Connor Bedard. Um, in my draft, lottery idea for the mock draft, Columbus also is taking Bedard at one. Ottawa there jumps from eight to two. Blackhawks dropped to three. Sharks there drop to four. And obviously in real life right now, all four of those teams have a very good shot at Conor Bedard. As you might notice there, the Carolina Hurricanes actually won the Stanley Cup. Now even though the top of the lottery is realistic, a couple surprises this year, as you guys will see here with the playoff tree, the Canucks actually made the playoffs. Uh, they were first round exit though to the LA Kings. I think they finished second in the Pacific Division. So uh, they played the Kings who were third. The Kings actually went on to make the Stanley Cup final before losing the Hurricanes. My auto, you know, control Tampa Bay Lightning there lost in the conference final as well. Also too, over in the East, you can see the Montreal Canadiens made the playoffs, actually beat Washington in the first round. I don't know how Montreal managed that. I forgot to mention too, I'm actually using my like custom roster. I made Montreal even worse than EA had them. So I really don't know how they pulled that one off. And you can see the team I'm controlling here, the Tampa Bay Lightning win the President's Trophy. Again, that was just like with everything set to auto. So that's kind of funny. Uh, quickly here, individual awards. McDavid gets the Art Ross, and that's pretty crazy as Edmonton still didn't make the playoffs. He also got the Hart Trophy, which real life, you don't win this trophy if you don't make the playoffs. McCarr, back-to-back -back James Norris, Goudreau, Lady Bing, Wyatt Johnson, Calder, that'd be sick. Pat Shreddy, Con Smythe, so comes back from injury, leads the Carolina Hurricanes there to Stanley Cup. Saros Vesna Trophy, along with William Jennings. Bill Masterson there to Mikey Anderson, which is kind of surprising because they made the playoffs. Uh, Montreal coach Jack Adams, I kind of figured that when I saw they made the playoffs. Kopitar Selkie, McDavid also got the Ted Lindsay, and then Tage Thompson there, Maurice Richard. So uh, we'll just sim through the offseason, guys, see what the Canucks lineup looks like to start year two. Uh, the fact they already made the playoffs is a pretty good sign. All right, guys, we're on to start year two here. Forward group looks to pretty much be the same. P's up to a 90. Uh, Bolivier's now an 84. Put Coles on their 83. Hogan are 82. Galchenik they've added as their fourth line center. Um, defensively here, they brought in Matt Roy, pair him up with Quinn Hughes. Honestly, probably not that bad because I feel like he's a bit better defensively. Obviously, Hughes is kind of like all out offense. He's also a 90 now. Um, Ekman, Larson, Myers, the second pair. Bear, Dermott on the bottom pair. Goaltending wise, Demko starting, ran to back him up. All right, so it doesn't really look like a Stanley Cup winning team to me, but <laughs> let's find out. All right, guys, so just finished him through the second year. As you can see here, the Vancouver Canucks again made the playoffs. Uh, this time, though, they were a wild card team opposed to being second in their division. I'll show you guys the playoff tree here. Unfortunately for them, uh, they actually lost the Avalanche there in five games in the first round. Calgary Flames, though, actually, when I won the Stanley Cup. I just realized, too, I should show you guys, like, the Canucks players' point totals after every year. Forgot to do that in year one. But quickly, I'm um, looking at the awards here. You can see the Flames beat the Panthers. McDavid, just absolute domination. Another Ed Ross trophy, which I would say... Pretty accurate. Barkov, though, with the heart. Okay, Quinn Hughes gets the James Norris. Very cool with the see any points yet. Also, Lady Bing there, so probably had almost no penalty minutes. Bedard called her trophy there. Year one with the Columbus Blue Jackets. I love seeing that. Mackenzie Weger, Consmite. That's kind of surprising, honestly. 
DeSmith, Vesna, Spencer Knight though at the lowest goals against, Murphy, Bill Masterton, Sharks coach Jack Adams, Kopitar back-to-back, -back. Selkies, Barkov, Ted Lindsay, and McDavid there actually with the Mr. Sharp, which he's probably going to win this year. So that is cool to see. Like, Quinn Hughes there, 92 points. I can see why he won the Norris. Pretty much all assists. And assuming he did get into two fights, he only took five penalties all year, so that's why he won the Lady Bing. PD as well, over a point per game. So those two guys essentially carrying this team. I mean, Kuzmenko, Miller, Besser, 60 plus points. Kuzmenko even 70. That's pretty solid. Bolvier, almost 50. Again, like this team's definitely surprised me with how they're performing, but I've not made out of the first round yet. We'll see if that changes in year three. All right, guys, well, let's start year three here. The Canucks have actually switched some things up a bit. We got JT Miller on the first line now with PD and Besser. PD's a 92 overall. Kuzmenko there on the second line with Barbashev and Hoaglander. But Colson, Bash, Jimmy Guy on the third line. Cousins, Bemstrom, and Garland on the fourth. So they got four new players there in the forward group. Cousins, Bemstrom, Bastion, and Barbashev. Really no one that's kind of that impactful. Uh, defensively there, Hughes and Bears are the top pair again. Hughes now 92. So him and PD are really carrying this team, as I mentioned. Um, Ekman, Larson, Dermott, Rathbone, Matta. So they probably signed Matta in the summer. Goaltending-wise, Demko the starter. They actually bring back Di Pietro. I'm assuming Boston just didn't sign him. That usually happens. I post them actually making a trade for him. That's something I want to show you guys quickly here because we did miss... Uh, the first season. You can see PD only put up 66 points in year one. Uh, Hughes as well didn't really go off that much. Only 58 and somehow still uh, they were second in their division. Also too, I figured it'd be cool to kind of show you guys what Bo Horvath's looking like on the Islanders. So he's up to an 89. I started at 88 overall. Playing first line there with Barzell and Sam Reinhardt is now on the Islanders. So that'd be a big get for them. Horvat here was a point per game last year. Actually more assists than goals which is definitely surprising. Uh, first year though he had 71 points there with 30 goals. So seems to be thriving on Long Island. Also to you guys check this out. Austin Matthews signed with the Anaheim Ducks. 95 overall. That is insane. I don't know what made him choose them. I assume they had the most money. So uh, I'll see if the Ducks can kind of uh, do some damage this year with Austin Matthews down the team. Check this out, guys. I just finished saving through year three. The Carolina Hurricanes win their second Stanley Cup in three years. Uh, the Canucks were a wild card team again. This time, though, they make it to the second round before losing to the Austin Matthews-led Anaheim Ducks. Pretty funny to see, honestly. Uh, you can see they actually beat the LA Kings there in the first round. And as I mentioned before, Hurricanes there. Second Stanley Cup in three years. Absolute domination. The Islanders there with the President's Trophy. So, uh, good for Bo Horvat. Angel Awards here. Wow. In his second year, Bedard beats up McDavid for the Art Ross. Look at the names. It's all McDavid, and then it's Bedard, the new face on NHL. Also gets the Hart Trophy there with the Blue Jackets. It would be crazy to see him actually come in and just take control of the league that fast, especially when, you know, competing against one of the best ever in McDavid. Uh, Hughes, unfortunately, does not get the James Norris. It's Adam Fox. Bedard also gets the Lady Bing there. Stan Coven Calder. So Dallas has gotten it two of the last three years. Pretty good for them. Aho Khan Smythe. Soroka with the Vesna. Knight, though, back-to-back -back Liam Jennings trophies. Uh, Mikey Anderson, Little Masterton, LA coach Jack Adams, Barkov there with the Selkie, Bedard also got the Ted Lindsay, so he's tearing up the league. Wow. Pashnak gets the Marisha Shard trophy with the Philadelphia Flyers. I didn't see that one coming. Um, as I mentioned to you guys, I want to show you just kind of what the Canucks looked like this year in terms of the individual performances. So I uh, got PD putting up 100 points. He's about to grow a ton in rating. Let's see his uh, contract. 9.6 for the next three years. And he was there at 95 points. So again, those guys are just absolutely carrying. He signed for the next three years as well. So in three years' time, could these guys be gone? We'll see. Miller over a point per game. Best of 69. Nice. I don't see Kuzmenko. Or maybe because he's a pending UFA, they're not showing him. I guess you guys will see in a couple seconds here uh, what the team's looking like to start next season. All right, guys. So now I started year four. Some new players on this Canuck roster, but still the core remains the same. Holgner's now on the first line with PD and put Coles in. Uh, Matthew Joseph they brought in. Playing with Miller there. is now at center. Mikhail on the left wing. Barbashev there moves the third line left wing. Playing with Nathan Bastian and Entwistle. Garland's on the fourth line there with Sonika and Cousins. Defensively here, they brought up a Tar to play with Hughes on the top pair. I'm not so sure about that. He's only an 80. Uh, Justin Schultz there down to an 80 now. Brain McNabb. Travis Dermott, Oli Mata. Goal turning, Demko still starting. He's actually down to 85. Frank, who's there, backing him up. I feel like this team really lacks the depth, but they made the playoffs every single year. So, who am I to say? Also, two guys on the Islanders. Bo Horvat now at 91. So, he's got up two overall since last we checked. And that's because he put up 94 points last year in 82 games. So, like I mentioned, the dude is just uh, unreal right now in New York. All right, guys. So, then year four here. The Minnesota Wild won the Stanley Cup. And for the first time, the Canucks did not make the playoffs. I'm actually curious to see... Uh, where they finished in the West. I missed it when the season first ended. So, Saddle there at the last spot. And the Canucks, oh wow, they didn't do too good. Uh, 15th there in the West. So, uh, they're only better than the Coyotes, and that's it. Obviously, they have a chance here for a top pick. Maybe they'll get Gavin McKenna. And I'll take a quick look here at the awards. I'm guessing none of the Canucks players won any. 
Johnny Gaudreau in the art, Ross, though, and the heart. That's pretty crazy. Probably has to do with him playing with the Conor Bedard. Uh, Drysdale there, James Norris, Goudreau, Lady Bing. Marco Rossi actually wins the Conn Smythe for the Wild. Stroken back-to-back -back Vesna. Vasilevsky, though, gets the William Jennings Trophy. McDavid with the Selkie is kind of crazy, to be honest. Uh, I feel like I loaded his defensive awareness as much as I could, and he still wins that. Marshan there, actually. Maurice Richard. So, I think there actually is going to be the lottery in a couple days. If the Canucks win it, that could be big for them actually, you know, rebuilding the team. And, okay, the Canucks do win a lottery. They jump from 4-2. to two. So, if there's like a created player, they could get McKenna there at the second spot. Uh, we'll see what the team looks like starting next year. Alright guys, so we're not starting year 5 here. And after missing the playoffs the first time, the Canucks made some pretty big changes. Uh, you guys can see here, Grabeshkov. This was their second overall pick. Dude looks pretty nasty. I'm not sure why the X Factors aren't showing up. I want him on this screen here, but you guys can see them there. He's playing on the top line with Petey and Miller. Petey's now at 93. I forgot to show you guys last season. He had 94 points. Second line there, Holder now at 87. Playing with Schmaltz as their second line center. But Coles is also on that line. So I feel like the top six is very solid. Look at their third line center. But they bring in Patrice Bergeron. I think I did the same thing in my Canucks franchise. A Barbashev there still on his wing. Fourth line also looks pretty good. Xavier Borgo, Atu Ratu now on the team. Matthew Joseph. Defensively here, Hughes is now at 93. I'll show you guys his point total from last season. 89 there. Uh, still playing with the Tart Top pairing. They brought in Ian Mitchell there with Mata. Yermo and Aki on the bottom pair. And then goaltending wise, they've actually got Vegmelka there as the backup to Demko, who's back to being 87. So I feel like this team should be a playoff team again. We'll see what happens. Now, this is pretty funny, guys. Look at this. The New York Islanders win the Stanley Cup in year five. Obviously, Bo Horvat's still on the team. We'll have to take a look and see uh, just how he did there in that playoff run. Um, Islanders there beat the Buffalo Sabres, Ottawa Senators, Rangers, and then the Vegas Golden Knights. Individual awards here, McDavid's winning the Arras Trophy again. So he had a couple off years, but he's back on top. Also gets the heart there. Evan Bouchard, James Norris. That's actually pretty surprising. McDavid, Lady Bing. Michael Misa on, on the Winnipeg Jets gets the Calder. Barzell got the Conn Smythe there for the Islanders. Philip Gustafson with the Vezina Trophy. Very surprising. Saros there on the Vegas Golden Knights. William M. Jennings actually saw he got traded, I think, for like William Carlson. In a couple seconds, you got Lindholm there with the Selkie. McDavid also gets the Ted Lindsay, and then this Valahadi guy, Marisha Shard Trophy for the Minnesota Wild. And you guys probably already noticed, but the Vancouver Canucks did not make the playoffs this year. I honestly thought they would have. Don't tell me they got last. Okay, no. So, uh, third last there in the West. I really thought they are going to do better, but obviously it just means they're going to get another top pick, which hopefully will kind of help them along in this rebuild. And again, Petey and Hughes are still sick. Petey there, 92 points. Hughes, 79 uh, even Miller there, close to 80. Hoglander, 64. Small start, over 50 points. Let's take a look, though, at Horvat. Uh, you got Barzell there, 102 points. Are you kidding me? Kaprizov joined the Islanders. That must have been a trade. One year left, 14.6 million. Maybe they could have signed him as a free agent. Um, I feel like if he got traded, definitely would have been like a blockbuster trade pop-up. So, yeah, uh, they must have just signed him. Of course, to go along with Reinhardt. Horvat there at 67 points. I mean, that is nasty, the fact that they got Kaprizov. Let's see here. I'm curious to see how Horvat did in the playoffs, win the Stanley Cup. 19 points, 23 games, not bad at all. So yeah, it looks like the Islanders won the trade so far, seeing as, you know, they won the Stanley Cup with Horvat. But if the Canucks can win one here in the next, you know, two or three years, I feel like it might be a draw. All right, guys, so that's our year six. As you can see, Grabeshko there up to an 86 overall. PD there still a 93. They've actually got Schmaltz playing on the first line with those two. Uh, but Colson, Miller, and Hogan is the second line. Then have Lindblom, Ratu, and Bunting actually on the third line. Grunstrom, Borgo, Formanton, fourth line. Defensively here, they got Hughes now paired up with Zadarov. That could be interesting. Zadarov, of course, very solid defensive defenseman. Uh, Aki there on the second pairing with Theo Lindstein. I didn't even realize uh, Canucks drafted him 2023, 19th overall. Uh, Matt there, Yermo, the bottom pair. Goaltending here, Demko still starting, Vegmelka there, still backing him up. So whoever they drafted this year is not on the team yet, but I did see he's got elite potential. So probably within like the next, you know, one or two seasons, we'll see him joining the lineup. But next year, guys, we'll see whether or not this team can get back into the playoffs. I feel like they still have a decent chance. All right, guys, so year 60 came to an end with a pretty crazy Stanley Cup final. The Austin Matthews-led Anaheim Ducks win the Stanley Cup, beating out Bo Horvat and the New York Islanders, who, of course, were the defending cup champs. So uh, pretty crazy to see the Islanders doing so well. So I should mention, but as you guys can see on screen there, the Canucks again missed the playoffs. I feel like their team's good enough, so they must just be getting unlucky. Now look at the individual awards here. Eichel with the Art Ross Trophy and the Hearts, kind of nuts. McCarr back to getting the James Norris Trophy. It's been a few years for him. Uh, Caulfield, Lady Bing. Quentin Musty gets the Calder. Terry there, Con Smythe for the Ducks, not Matthews. Vasilevsky there with the Vesna Trophy, along with William Jennings. Siegenthaler back-to-back with -back Tins. Uh, let's see, Lindholm back-to-back -back Selkies. Eichel gets a 10 Lindsay. And the Kaprizov there with Amir Shashard. I mean, obviously, adding him to the Islanders with Bo Horvat. Um, definitely make them a much better team. Now, uh, curious to see where the Canucks did finish this year in the West. I feel like I said they got to be getting close. 10th place, okay, 84 points. They were actually two points or like one win out of the playoffs. So yeah, they were definitely like right there, unfortunately. 
Uh, just felt a little bit shy. And now look at the players this year, guys. Check this out. They must have traded for Tara Vine at the deadline. 74 points in 83 games. Are you kidding me? Actually, oh no, yeah, okay. He was on St. Louis there. We got traded to the Canucks. Almost a point per game for them. So that is a big get. Uh, let's see. PD 72, Miller 70, Hughes 64. So their best players slowed down a bit. Again, though, they just drafted somebody pretty nice. We'll see what uh, next year has in store for them. All right, guys, we're not starting year eight here. As you can see, first line is Grabeshkov, PD, Teravainen. PD's actually dropped to a 91. Uh, second line there, put Coles in, Schmaltz, Miller. On the third line, they've added Athens to C. You can see the wheels X factory is quite fast. Um, Otto Ratu, Hoaglander, Steen, Bellows, Bunting, the fourth line. Defensively here, Husla, 93, Pera Bazadarov, um, Aki, Sandin, Yermo, Blankenberg. Goaltending wise, they got Demko still starting with Silas there backing him up. So, I mean, T doesn't look too much better than last season. Maybe Turvani can kind of push them over that hump, get into the playoffs. We'll see. So just finishing through the seventh season, guys. As you can see, no playoffs again for the Canucks. The Blackhawks actually win the Stanley Cup. So uh, took them seven years, or actually a bit more than that, a little more closer to ten years to rebuild. But they do get it done. I saw as well they beat the Blue Jackets there in the Stanley Cup Finals. So uh, Bedard, of course, almost gets the job done for the Blue Jackets, falling a little bit short. Jason Robertson, our Ross Trophy, and the Heart. Very, very cool. Here's North there goes to Adam Fox. Ehlers now on Dallas gets the Lady Bing. Adam Fantilli was drafted by the Blackhawks. That'd be pretty sick. Seven years from now, Fantilli versus Bedard in the Stanley Cup Final. Um, Alan Felt Vesna for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Wow, did they lose Vasilevsky? Also got the William Jennings Trophy. Uh, Carlo Bill Masterton, LA coach Jack Adams. I feel like that's his third one. Fantilli also got the Selkie. Robertson, 10 Lindsay. And this boost guy on Blackhawks, Maurice Richard. So, the Canucks got to do something this summer to try and turn things around. Um, we'll see how far they missed by this season. Obviously, last year, they were one win out. And this year, let's see. Ooh, this isn't looking good. 76 points. Third last in the conference. So, yeah, they definitely got to, you know, trade some players. Hope for some player growth as well. As obviously, they started out pretty strong making the playoffs their first three years. But they've only made it one time since then, I believe. Miller there, almost a point per game. Yeah, Modern now on the team. Interesting, 88 overall, add him at the deadline. Again, when they're not doing bad, I really don't understand adding a player like Yamato, but uh, I mean, he did well, so you can't complain too much. PD Hughes, only in the low 60s. They've slowed down quite a bit. They're now, you know, around 30 years old. I feel like they've only got so much time left here in terms of the cup window. All right, guys, Thunder Star year eight. As you can see, your best cup here is up to an 88. Uh, PD there's still 91, player with Tara Vinan. They were able to keep Yamato on the team. They got him playing on the second line there, Schmaltz and Miller. They then got Athens CU, Gergensen, and put Colson on the third line with Bunting, Ratu, Costin on the fourth. So, Forward group looks pretty solid defensively, obviously led by Hughes still. Zadarov Sandin's a very solid second pair. This Hubert O guy was actually their top five pick back in 2027. He looks like a very solid offensive defenseman, so have him on the power play. Goaltending wise, Demko still starting. They have Samsonov now backing him up. So, I mean, I keep saying like the last couple years, this team looks like it should be a playoff team, but I feel like it's probably the best one they've had yet, so. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, so just finished saving year eight. As you can see, again, the Canucks missed the playoffs. They were super close to making it, though. I'll show you in a couple seconds. We actually had an 06 Stanley Cup final rematch. Oilers versus the Hurricanes. Again, though, Carolina wins that one. That's their third Stanley Cup in eight years. So kind of a dynasty. I mean, obviously, a little bit stretched out, but still not bad. Individual awards here. Matthews Art Ross Trophy with the Ducks. Tage Thompson, though, gets the heart with the Buffalo Sabres. Ekblad, James Norris. Ehlers back-to-back. -back, Lady Bangs. Nietzsche actually got the Conn Smythe, Soroka with another Vesna trophy, Rossi there with the Selkie, interesting, I think his defensive stats were that great, Thompson also got the Ted Lindsay, and then Matthews there, Maurice Richard. So, um, like I was saying guys, Canucks fell just short this season, um, I think they were literally like one win away from the playoffs, um, yeah, so 90 points tied with the Sharks, Oilers there at 91, so... You know, three teams there fighting for that last playoff spot. And take a look here at the team. You can see PD there close to a point per game, so a bit better of a season. 74, Teravine in 66 isn't bad. Schmaltz, 60. Miller, Yamato, Quinn Hughes, all basically 60. One or two points shy. But uh, Quinn Hughes, PD definitely slowed down. You can see they're in the 60s now, opposed to like those 90-point seasons they had early on. Definitely need to kind of, you know, find that form, kind of like Carlson refound his form with the Sharks if the Canucks want to have a chance here at actually going deep in the playoffs and winning a cup. Demko still doesn't look too bad. I feel like they can get it done with him in net, but uh, we'll see what changes they make this summer. Now, check this out, guys. The start of year nine, the Canucks have made some big moves. They still got Grabeshkov on the team, playing with PD on the first line, and now they have Jesper Bratt on the other wing, 89 overall. Second line there, still got Yamato. Know, Sam Reinhardt they brought in to be the second line center, and they're playing with Miller there, who's down to 82 overall. Isaiah's 37 years old. 
What's his contract like? 4.6 for two more years, not terrible. Third line, you still got Athena Siu, playing with Maverick Bjork, who's up to an 86. And Gergensen, Otto Ratu there on the fourth line, still at 81. Playing with Steele and Miles Wood. The Canucks return for Bo Horvat definitely doesn't look too good in this game. Like, Ratu's a fourth liner. And Bo was off the team a while ago. Um, defensively here, Quinn Hughes still 92. Aki's 83. Nicholas Bodwin's down the team. Huberdeau there's an 83, but obviously, immediately potential. Theo Lindstein, Zadarov, goaltending. They lose Demko, so that's big. Uh, Joel Hofer there, the starter, and then Tristan Jari backing him up. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, so I just finished saving through Season 9. As you can see, the Canucks again missed the playoffs. So they got one year left to win it. If they can win it in year 10, the AIGM is better than me. If not, uh, you know, we're both pretty bad, I guess. But as you can see there, the Anaheim Ducks win another Stanley Cup. Obviously, adding Austin Matthews for free via free agency is going to make the team a lot better. And that's their second cup in four years. Individually here, McKinnon, Art Ross Trophy, and the Hart. I don't think he's won either of those yet. McCarr and there, James Norris, Kaprizov, Lady Bing. Uh, Drives out there, got the Conn Smythe Trophy, Knight with a Vesna, along with William Jennings. I think he won like back to back. Carlo gets back to back to back to Masterton. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Very interesting. Hurricanes coach Jack Adams coming off a of Stanley Cup. That one's interesting as well. Lundell, Selke, McKinnon, Ted Lindsay, and then Bedard there actually, I think, for his first brief Richard. And I'm curious to see, guys, where did the Canucks finish this year? I thought their team was pretty solid. And apparently not. Wow, second last there in the West. They added Brat, they added Sam Reinhardt. Like, they looked pretty good to me. Uh, maybe the goaltending with Hofer and uh, Jari there was not good enough. Let's see. Uh, PD here over point per game. Brat 75, Grabeshka 66, Reinhardt 60, Hughes basically 60. William Bjork there, almost 50 points. I see that, like, all their top players were, like, really bad plus minuses. So that's probably a big reason why. Max Domi, I don't think was on the team before, so they must have added him. Also, Essa Lindell here, 18 games played, so he might have been scratched or something. And look at this, guys. The Canucks just got the first overall pick. Hopefully that player is good. Uh, so they were not only second last in the West, but also the entire NHL. Uh, maybe you can save this team and bring him a Stanley Cup. All right, guys, so this is the player the Canucks drafted first overall. Wes Arsene, 80 overall, medium elite sniper. Oh my god, 90 everything shot. Uh, looks like he tore up whatever league he was in. Uh, the U.S. League, 82 points, 68 games. He got the beauty backhand zone ability. Uh, he looks pretty sick. All right, guys, it's another start of year 10. We'll take a look at the Canucks team. You got Grabeshko on the first line with Petey and Brandt. That guy we just drafted first overall. Arsene play with Reinhardt and Miller on the second line. I'm surprised Miller's honestly still second line, even though he's only 78 overall. But I guess shot and hands still aren't too bad. Uh, Maverick Bjork there on the third line. Jacob Pelche, 85. They added him to the team, along with Joachim Kamel, also an 85. So that third line looks a lot better now. All three 85 overall players. Uh, Domi, Bullduck, and Lemaire there on the fourth line. It's not too bad. Uh, defensively, still Hughes and Aki. Yoki Harge is down the team there. Huber Doe, 84 overall. Bjornfoot, Otto Vinen. Goaltending, still a Hofer there with Jari. So, I mean, if Hofer can play well, the team in front of him, I think, should be good enough to make the playoffs. But I've been saying that for the past, you know, four or five years, and it hasn't happened. But maybe this year they get back in. All right, guys, we've been saying for one decade, and again, the Canucks missed the playoffs. Not only that, but I think they actually had a top five pick, like, due to where they finished in the standings. So, um, as you can see here, the team I'm sort of controlling the Tampa Bay Lightning actually win the Stanley Cup, so that's kind of funny. Uh, we'll take a look at the awards here, just to see individual. McDavid Art Ross, again, he's still tearing it up. Trevor Zegers, though, with the Hart Trophy. McCarr gets another James Norris, also gets the Lady Bing. Cody Glassler, Con Smythe, with the Lightning. Interesting. I've never seen him get too, too good. Kosa Vesna Trophy, I'd love to see that in real life. Uh, Darnson there, William Jennings Trophy. So, he must have got pretty decent, whereas, you know, in our 2023 draft class video, he stunted out at like a 74-75. Uh, Chernick there gets the Bill Masterton. Finally, somebody other than Carlo. Misa there with a Selkie, Zegers, Ted Lindsay, and then that booze guy on the Blackhawks with the Marisha Shard. And I'm now looking at the entire league here, guys, and check this out. Like, the Canucks, they're third last in the NHL. I just don't get it. Like, looking at their roster, I feel like they should be a much better team. Uh, maybe because, obviously, we're not controlling them. They have, like, a really bad head coach or something. Uh, Petey there was a point per game again. Brad and Grabeshka, both over 70. Reinhardt there was close. Quinn Hughes had 60. Uh, this Arsene guy in his rookie year, 39 points, which isn't terrible, but um, not amazing either. Let's check out the goaltending stats. Hofer there, I mean, above 900, like, it's not terrible. Uh, we'll keep going here. I'm thinking probably put a cap on it around 15 years just because I want to sim, you know, forever for no reason. But um, we'll see if the Canucks can turn around here soon. All right, guys, we're now the start of year 11 here. And before I show you the Canucks team, I first want to show you this Tempe Lightning Stanley Cup winning team. How did this team win the Cup? Like, the first line's not bad, although no one there's got an X-Factor. I mean, you got a 76 on the second line. Middle stat won the con Smythe with the Bolts. Um, I mean, you got like a 79 there, no Connor on the third line. Obviously, there might have been some changes during the summer, but I feel like the core of this team would be the same. 
And like, this does not even look like a playoff team to me. So I just don't get this game sometimes. Like I'll show you guys the Canucks roster here in two seconds. I feel like they're so much better than the fact that having the playoffs in what, the past seven years is just crazy. So on this Arsene guys up to an 85, playing with a 92 PD, 87 Brat. You got Manth on the team. Now I know someone really wanted me to add him out of the Canucks in the franchise series. 90 Grabeshkov, play him in the middle. 80 face off, so we can play there. On um, this Ludwig guy, solid second round pick, 2027. Uh, Setaguchi, they would have just picked. Yeah, fourth overall. He looks solid. Playing the kill Thomas there and Chinikov. Kamel's on the fourth line with Pelche and Boquist. Like, they have so much forward depth there. Uh, defensively, still led by Hughes, Aki, Yoki Haruju, Herbert Doe. Looks like he's kind of stunting out there to mid 80. Uh, Vero, Roos. And then goaltending wise, Hofer there still starting with Schmid there backing him up. So, this team looks like a playoff team to me. It looks better than the Lightning team, but. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I just finished the 11th season here, guys. And another Florida team was the Stanley Cup. This time, though, it's the Panthers beating the Ducks there in seven. I had the Oilers back in the conference final. Canucks finally make the playoffs. Unfortunately, though, first round exit the crack, and they actually got swept. So still really can't seem to catch a break. Hopefully, you know, in the next couple of seasons, they can actually start to contend. And now quickly here, guys, look at the awards. McDavid again, Art Ross Trophy. Tim Schutzel, though, with the heart. Clark on Florida now. James Norris and Lady Bing, very interesting. Also, Con Smythe tore it up. Askarov there, Vesna along with William Jennings. Let's see, Michael Misa with another Selkie. Strutzel there, Ted Lindsay, and then some made up guy, Marisha Shard. And on the Canucks, you can see Pete had another point per game season. Brat was pretty close. Grabeshkov, not bad. Hughes, 69 is nice. Um, Arsene there, 56. I feel like he's going to turn into a player. Where's the guy that they just drafted? Um, Setaguchi, I believe it was. 20 points. Would have hoped for more from him, but I just noticed his tone ability there is shot blocking. And the rest of his X-Factors, aside from Aurelius, are also defensive, so looks to be more of a shutdown guy than a point producer. But now to start of year 12 here, guys. As you can see, the first line of the Canucks is Grabeshkov, PD, and Arsene. So he's basically playing with the two young guns. Uh, Bratz on the second line now with Thomas and this Ludwig guy. That's kind of funny if you guys watch the YouTuber. Uh, Chinikov on the third line with Pelche, Setaguchi, Poulin, McBain, Protus on the fourth. Uh, defensively here, Hughes down at 89 now. He's 33 years old, so it makes sense. And he's paired up with Brandstrom there. Um, Aki, Huberdeau, Yermo, Norlander, goaltending. Hardigan here, 87 overall. Was drafted by the Nashville 2025. He's the starter. And then this Zarenko guy backing him up. Okay, so a bit of a different looking team here, but still Petey and Hughes are there. Those are the two you know pillars for this team. I think they're the only two that are still here from the original team. Let's see if they can get it done this season. All right, guys, we're now thinking year 12 here, and the Cucks might have finally finished the rebuild. As you can see, they're actually one game away from their first ever Stanley Cup. Currently in Game 7 there with the Florida Panthers. Kind of like a Pavel Bury matchup, we'd call it. So unfortunately, because I have control of Tampa, I can't actually watch the Sim. But we'll just move forward a couple days and see. Do the Canucks finally get this done? Here we go. And they do. <laughs> and apparently the day after, Dallas fires their head coach, who is Mark Stahl now. That is really funny. So... I'll take a look here and see, like, the final, you know, Canucks roster. Maybe they made some moves at the deadline um, I don't know about. We'll also see, you know, how those players played in the playoffs. But look at the playoff tree here. You guys can see they beat the Ducks in seven, Sharks in six, Avs in six, and then the Panthers there in seven. So they definitely, you know, earned their Stanley Cup. And now look at the awards here, guys. I just remember, too, the Florida Panthers won the Stanley Cup last year. So they literally beat the defending Stanley Cup champs. That is pretty cool. Matthews led Ducks with another President's Trophy. Obviously signing him was huge for that team. Zegers has got the Art Ross there as well. And the Hart, okay. Um, a car, James Norris. Matthews, Lady Bing. Uh, Parks there got the Calder Trophy. That was actually on Tampa Lightning. PD wins the Con Smythe. I'm pretty sure too, this was his last year before Zeal expired. So maybe I'll send him through the summer just to see if they bring him back or not. It'd be kind of crazy. He finally wins the Canucks Stanley Cup, wins the Con Smythe, then pieces out after what, like a 20 year career with them. And real quick guys, thanks to the power editing. I'm coming to you from 10 minutes in the future. PD does leave in free agency. I can't believe that. Wins the Canucks a cup, bounces, says peace out. I'm done here. And he actually went and signed the Buffalo Sabres. So um, kind of crazy, kind of gives me like Kawhi vibes, wins the team a championship, then pieces out. But at least he did stay till they won, so gotta respect that. Uh, Dostal there on our team won the Vesna. wow, okay. Potvin, William Jennings, Pesci, Bill Masterton, uh, Bedard gets a Selkie, I think that's the first ever time. Zegers also got the Ted Lindsay, and then Matthews there and Marisha Shard. So, a big year there for the Ducks. Now check this out guys, I'm looking at league-wide playoff scoring. PD went off, 39 points in 26 games, had a couple game winners. Uh, Grabeshkov there as well, 34 and 26. Those two guys carried. You then got Matthew Kachuk third, Brant Clark. Joachim Kamel was on the Canucks team for a bit. He was fifth. Um, I even seen down here, Pitt Colson, of course, was on the Canucks for a while. He was on the Panthers team too, so 
Uh, some guys, I think, you know, trying to get some revenge there. But we'll see just kind of overall this team's performance. That Arsene guy, 25, so basically a point per game. After the top three guys, there, the production really falls off. Uh, goaltending, they had a good goalie. He put up pretty good numbers, like a 915 save percentage, 2.99 goals against. So there you have it, guys. Took the AIGM 12 years to rebuild this Canucks team. Obviously built around PD and Hughes, as I mentioned before. The only two guys that remained on this team throughout the entire rebuild. So... Uh, pretty cool to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.